Okay, I'm uh, Spencer Moore. I'm Director of Strategy for Simpsburg. We're the Chartered Institute for Sport and Physical Activity. In my role of Director of Strategy, um, uh, this is, it says it uh, on the tin, um, I have uh, responsibility for sort of short, medium and long-term strategy and direction of travel for Simspa. And day to day, I look after our uh, education standards and policy team, our digital strategy team and our project management team and our governance and uh, infrastructure as well. Okay, so there's a, there's, a, there's a wide ranging role there. So help us understand a little bit more about Simspur itself. It's a long and complicated uh, uh, business organisation name. Um, what does it do? So uh, we're a professional body. Uh, so like any other professional body, uh, and we also are a membership body. Two broad remits. Uh, one, uh, we set uh, regulation and standards for the sector around education and training, uh, what standards for deployment, uh, CPD policies, etc. So, so, so really starting to sort of uh, drive the professionalism of the sector and, and, and get those standards and policies uh, embedded in the sector. And the second arm that we have is a membership arm. So we provide membership services to a range of uh, people. Um, our sector is really, really broad. So it goes from health and fitness to community sport. We have elite sport. We have uh, health and well-being. Uh, we have um, outdoor education. So, so yeah, anybody who works in that space, either in a frontline role, in a in a sort of supportive role or a managerial role, um, all are eligible for membership within our organisation. So, in total, our sector has um, about five hundred thousand people working in our sector, um, and eligible for membership. With, against our rules are about 300,000 so so um yeah pretty broad and and and, and wide ranging which um which is great, but brings its own challenges. So you've described uh, a lot of complexity in your audience. Tell us a little bit more around what makes your job and and, the, and Simspur's responsibility so complex with that audience. That whilst whilst we are one sector, uh, our our biggest problem is probably the the culture and the experience uh, and background um so so within our sector all of those areas are, are six separate industries uh, and and uh, so for example in health and fitness there is a culture and a history of standards and regulations and qualifications um less so in in maybe uh health um so we're creating new 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 jobs and new qualifications um in community sport, you can imagine uh, there's a huge volunteering element to it. We don't deal with the volunteers, but there's five million volunteers. So there's a different culture and nuance that goes there. The sector is, is, is split up and they all have their own nuances that, that we, we, have to, we have to work within. And then you get some, you know, some really big uh, leisure providers that we work with that actually employ people in each of those different um, bits of our sector as well. So trying to, trying to manage each individual sector and then big businesses that, that go across all the sectors make, make it difficult. And we also go from you no know, students. So we, we've got a higher education endorsement scheme. So, so it's not only just the breadth, it's the scope. So we literally go from student to CEO. So again, the needs of each of those and the stages they are in their career and what the services and support they need from us vary massively as well. So, um, so that's one area of our membership. And then we, are, we have partner members as well. So we, we have universities, we have colleges, we have training providers, we have awarding bodies, uh, and we have employer partners. So, so that there's six partnerships as well that all underpin the individual bit. So um, the interrelationships and the complexities of how they all join together and to try and standardise that across a, a single sector is 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 challenging at times. Um, yeah, it sounds sounds like you need a thousand people to to manage all those complexities. So, what's the scale of Simspa? Um, we're currently um, forty three strong. Um, uh, if if I kind of give you the the other complexity we have is um, I've been there six years, and 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 at the time. We had uh, 900 members um, and seven people working for us. And in, in the six years, uh, we've managed to grow um, to 43 members of staff and just under 20,000 members. So, yeah, the, it, it's, 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 it's quite a rapid growth uh, as well as trying to service the whole sector at the same time. 
Yeah, it sounds like it's a, it's a significant uh, phase of growth for you. So how do you manage all of the different the complexity with all those different audience types? Can you can you prioritize? Can you try to address common requirements in one? What's the what's how does that get solved? We, we think we've been successful by sort of undertaking a, a, a very much a leading by listening approach. Um, so we spend a lot of time uh, getting un understanding the problems. Um, and, and so more treating the causes than symptoms so if we really start to understand the causes it, it actually bring narrows down the issues that we we have to deal with and we start to get get a, a level of commonality um our sector you know each bit of our sector all thinks they're different and our sector as a whole actually thinks it's it's fundamentally different to any other sector um but yeah what once you actually listen and you understand and you get behind the problems you realize that you know that there's probably half a dozen common set of problems that, that we're dealing with so again if i give you an example um we don't actually across all of our sector have a clear policy on uh what is qualified and competent okay there's lots of urban rumors there's lots of myths people people make things up the insurance aren't quite clear so one of the one of the big jobs across everything is right setting those professional standards and starting to set that policy so that the, uh, so that everybody's really really clear uh, and 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 that's something that everybody's asked us to do um from you know across the whole sector from student to ceo because once we've identified the um that that sort of the next problem is is people say to us how do i get into the sector and how do i move through so we can start creating career maps and career ladders uh, and then it's you know um what's the mechanism for me to move through the sector and into the sector so we then start to look at you know the education and training provision so there's some really three four five big boulders that 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 across all of the issues that we've got and and so we're more we more are looking at systemic change rather than interventionist change so i think if we can if can we rebuild the system or, or, or remodel the system at the, at the back end then actually a lot of the symptoms that we're seeing or being challenged with we will be able to so it's it's a very long-term strategy um, um but if we hadn't taken that approach you can imagine we, we'd have been running around trying to put fires out all over the place and they've just been springing up everywhere else i think we just had to really pare back the issue and 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 really understand the problem that we were we we're trying to fix. To be honest, yeah, fascinating insight into that. I really appreciate that. It's it's great to to hear. Um, so, in six years, do you think your audience's needs have changed, or do you think they were always the same, and you're just seeing different evolutions of that? Pandemic aside, I, I think they've always been there. Um, so we, um, I've been around the sector for twenty odd years, and and yeah, the same. The same symptoms have always been there um, and therefore what the audience want and what they need has always been there. Um, so now I, I think it's, it's just actually what they've never had is a chartered institute. Someone with the, with the, the again, come with a, with a chartered institute come, you know, a, a charter and a statutes and, and a level of power and regulation to do things. So actually having an instrument to actually to, to do all of these things has never been there. So I think I think the needs have always been there. We just never had the, the wherewithal to actually um, make a difference and make those changes that, that the sector's actually been been crying out for. And in terms of the last year uh, with, with the pandemic, um, we see a lot of membership organisations struggling to retain their membership, uh, struggling to, be, to continue to be relevant to their members. Um, what have you seen in terms of your, particularly in the membership side? We've been actually quite lucky. Um, but I think that was that was I will give praise to our CEO who called it very, very early. Uh, we actually locked down early, um, probably a month before everybody else did. And we we literally pivoted the business. So um, our CEO said this is going to hit the sector hard. It's going to hit the, you know, going to hit the UK hard. Um, she's one of the few people that did predict, you know, this is going to go on for a long time. You know, this could be a year um, at the end of it. We need to be relevant. So, uh, yeah, we literally paused our strategy um and pivoted the whole team re, re, literally restructured the team overnight and came up with this concept of stronger together which, which was uh, a much more of a philanthropic approach um and through leading by listening we went out early we're speaking to our members we're putting out surveys what's the issues what are we trying to solve so around you know self the lack of money for self-employed not people not understanding the furlough scheme, not understanding all policies, not understanding the latest guidance from government. So very, very early on, we started to get a feel of, of what 
the sector actually needed. Um, so we 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 said pivoted the business and 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 basically provided those services. So you know every time. Um, uh, the government makes an announcement. Um, we are right at the forefront. We're, we're talking to DCMS. We're getting the interpretation. We're able to publish the guidance in layman's language within 24 hours. We then hold a Facebook seminar and, and, and go through it and we ask questions. So um, actually, um, it's made us more relevant. Our profile in the sector has never been bigger. Um which um, has allowed us to, to probably stay steady with membership. Uh, we've lost some, and, and, and that's understandable. There's a lot of people, you know, th- th- there's estimates of between 20 to 30% of people actually left our sector. So, that, you know, th- th- that has a knock-on effect. But the fact that we pivoted and kept ourselves relevant and uh, and our the buzzword that I haven't used yet, but I'll probably keep using throughout the rest of the presentation is we've added value. So we kept on adding value, but we added value to the whole sector. So suddenly people who didn't know about us went, oh my God, you know, I, I can't live without you. You've been a great job. So, so yeah, we, we, we've been filling up uh, with new members as many as we've been losing. So, so we, we've been fairly steady and I think it's, it's given us a new way of thinking uh, moving forward so again we want to take what we've learned in terms of of, of, of that um uh that approach in terms of, of of how can we build on that and how how can we we support the, the sector getting back on its feet and then 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 take that relevance so that member value partner proposition uh, has, has been incredible we, we built a facebook group um from from zero to over five thousand inside you know a, a matter of months and, and it keeps growing and and it's now suddenly become a real key communication forum for us we've never used it before so it's right okay how how do we how do we grasp webinars how do we you know the blogs and and, and all of that and how how do we how do we keep that engagement going so yeah it's, it's been been a great learning exercise for us um and but i think we've, we've come out of it pretty strong great really interesting so have your communication channels changed? Have you adopted more digital techniques to try and get in front of these people and keep pushing that message out? Yes, I'd say so. I'd say um, we've had greater emphasis uh, on social media. Um, yeah, face, fa- say Facebook is probably being our, our biggest win. Um, but yeah, um, digital, you say we've probably run for a dozen webinars. Again, and we're, we're now planning to run uh um monthly no, it's probably i think actually i'm doing ourselves a disservice at some points we're running weekly webinars for different partners and we're going to continue to do monthly webinars so that using the digital zoom and, and everything else was was really good the facebook uh we've always been pretty strong on, on our twitter and social media but again uh get getting getting that out as well um so yeah i'd, I'd say our digital uh communications has has advanced and again it's an area where, again, looking forward of what we've learned, we're going to really feel we need to invest further in, into that, that, that area and, 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 and grow our capability and capacity to do more. So in your role as strategy director, um, you will have focus uh, into the short term, the medium term and, and the long term. What's your mm-hmm. focus for this year? We are funded by Sport England, um, who are the sort of the sports council. Um, we work as a UK body, we work across all of the areas, but we, we get a, 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 some significant funding from Sport England. And they've literally just launched their new 10 year strategy um, this year, uh, this week, sorry. Um, and again, the the next year is basically um, reinvent, is come back stronger. So, so again, it is, um, it's all about recovering the sector, ready to bounce forward. So, again, looking as a sector, you know, um, how 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 do we get you know the members coming back? How do we get the facilities back open? How do we give confidence back to the public and and all of those types of things? And, and our role as sort of the workforce lead in the sector is what element do, what elements do people play in that? So we already have a free COVID training CPD uh, online CPD that we make available. So again, it's, it's keeping pushing that out. It, it's it's um, it's working to try and uh, get. Um, uh, more training qualifications out there. As I said, we probably have lost 20% of our of our workforce. So again, how do, how do we fill that tank back up again, and how do we, how do we galvanise that training sector? So it, it is literally recover uh, and, and reinvent. And I think that there, there is a determination across the sector to learn the lessons and 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 make sure that we're not as fragile as, as, as we were and, and 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 try and become more resilient and, and look at what what's worked well and 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 reinvent and, and do things differently so there's there's definitely an entrepreneurial innovation feel to the next 12 months as well 
Yeah, it it sounds like um, the, the the next phase for you is is is, necess- is less one of sort of pushing the new accreditations and the chartered status and things like that, and more actually just about uh, achieving more normality and getting things back to where they were. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, um, it, it's it's yeah, it's it's going to be interesting in terms of of a, a work program. So so it's almost given us twelve months grace to to actually look at all of those products and services that are going to happen. Uh, and some of them are on the verge of being launched. I've probably got about five projects that were, were we were going to be pressing go um, last year that are just set, sat there ready. So it's enabling us to finesse them a little bit more and go back and run a few more pilots. So, so yeah, so we're still we're still going to be working on those types of things. But yeah, most of our focus, I would say, will, will be on we on 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 sector recovery and keeping supporting the sector and the individuals that work in there. And they say ready to, you know, once we get ourselves back on our feet is to, to you know, bounce back stronger with 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 a lot a lot more exciting accreditations and, and start to, you know, as you said, drive chartered membership and other bits and pieces. Um, but, yeah, at the moment, um, yeah, the, 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 the thing is, is get let's get the sector open and get it back on its feet again. I guess with your relationship with Sport England and the fact that you're both waiting on governmental guidelines about what happens, you have to be able to react quite quickly to uh, to changes that um, that you can't necessarily predict. Um, yeah, that, that's that's been something that yeah we've learned with we, um, pivoting um, frantically. Um, and again, the, the the issue is you know uh, especially in physical activity, the, the the home nations all have different guidance as well. So you know our comms team are constantly every time you know that, that uh, Boris speaks, we have to make sure you know what's the implications. Then Nicola Sturgeon speaks, or or the Welsh government speaks. So so yeah, pivoting um, constantly uh, is, is going to be key uh, and responding to those changes and. And lobbying and, and making sure our message is heard is, has been a real key uh, key piece of work that we, we've helped support. Again, it's not just serious, but that we've had you know Sport England, UK Active, and others have, have all all been there. And, and again, what we've also found is that that um, as a collective of a collective sort of landscape partners, co- policy makers coming together to, to, to again provide that stronger together front and, and lobby government is, is it, that's been a real big. Uh, learning exercise for the sector, you know. So, so if we do come together and we speak with one voice, then 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 we can be heard as well. So, I think that's that's something we want to, as a sector, uh, carry on with. So. Great, thank you. Well, you've given us a fascinating insight into the inner worlds and the workings of, of Simsper and some of your ambitions and, and ideals. And, uh, and and now I just say that I'm so impressed with the way in which you've you've tackled, you've pivoted, you've worked at speed, you understand your members and, and what they need from you. So, uh, so yeah, I think that I think from the outside and working a little bit with you, we we can see you doing, doing a cracking job. So, thank you very much. I have one further question, which is nothing to do with uh, with Simsper, but it's uh, lockdown ends. Spend some more. What's the first thing you do? Party. Swim, gym, pub, meal. What's um, what's on your wish list? Um, go on holiday. I think. Um, yeah, that. Um, uh, we we regularly well, or, or or take the the dogs to down to the coast. I say I'm very boring. I say that, that my, my, I'm, I've got quite a simple life, but yeah, we we um we do enjoy walking our dogs on the coast. So uh, yeah, we live in the middle of the country. So getting out to North Yorkshire or the East Coast or somewhere like that and just spending a few days um is is probably the thing I'm looking forward to most. 